This video is brought to you by Arun Meta. Thank you so much for donating. If you want to support Brekkies yourself, you can go to patreon.com slash Brekkies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video in Game Math Theory, a series that covers essential mathematical concepts that you will definitely run into during your game development career. Today we will be looking at sine waves. The topic of sine waves is one of those fundamental mathematical phenomenons that has fascinated developers for a long time. Because of their simple organic nature, they are used in a number of ways in totally different aspects of development, such as making waves in the ocean, moving around enemies, or even generating sound. So what is a sine wave? A sine wave is a function. If we observe a sine wave shown on a coordinate system, we can see that if we input any value, which we call x, into the function sine, we will get some value that's called that y. If, for example, we insert the value 1 into the function, we get a value of 0.8. As we insert values of increasing size, we can see that the resulting y value smoothly goes from 0 to 1, to 0, to minus 1, and then back to 0. We say that the function oscillates between 1 and minus 1. From the graph it becomes clear that the function repeats a Itself. In fact, we can keep zooming out from the graph and the sine wave will always repeat. To understand why this is happening, we have to look at how a sine wave is constructed. We begin by drawing a circle in the center of our coordinate system and giving it a radius of exactly one unit. You'll never guess what the circle's called. That's right, the unit circle! I need to get out more. If we then draw a line from the center of the circle to a point on the circle, we can create a right angle triangle where a line will act as the hypotenuse. Now what if I told you that the angle in the left hand corner of the triangle is actually the x value that we input into the function and that the y coordinate of the upper corner of the triangle, which we can just read off the y axis, is in fact the resulting value of the function. So if we begin at an x value of 0, meaning that the angle will be 0 degrees, and then start to increase that number, we see that the height of the triangle slowly moves towards 1, then back to 0, and as our angle goes above 180 degrees, the y value becomes minus 1 and then completes the loop by going back to 0. Here's how it looks together with the graph. Because the total number of degrees in a circle is 360, our function will repeat in intervals of exactly 360, which we also see on the graph. One thing that we have to be careful with when dealing with the sine function is that because it uses an angle as input, we have to decide what unit of measurement we want to use. Most people are familiar with using degrees to measure angles, but it's just as common to use radians. The only difference is that instead of going from 0 degrees to 360 degrees, the angle goes from 0 radians to 2 pi radians. Pi of course being the number 3.14. So let's have a look at a practical example where sine waves come in handy. Say that we want to create a cool hover animation for a coin. Well, whenever we want to animate something over time, we simply use the amount of seconds passed since we started the game as input for our sine function. So in this case we could set the y position of our coin equal to the sine of t, where t is time. That means that the coin starts with a y position of 0 and then smoothly moves up and down as time goes by. If we want to increase the speed of our animation, we would multiply our time variable with some number. Multiplying by 2 will make the animation go twice as fast, just as multiplying with 0.5 will make the animation go twice as slow. We can also influence how far the coin moves up and down. To do this we simply multiply the entire function, sine of t, by a number. So if we want the coin to move 2 units up and 2 units down, we would multiply by 2. And again, we can reduce the distance that the coin moves by multiplying with a smaller number. But hey, that's just a theory. A game math theory. Bonus fact, that beep sound is made with a sine wave. Remember, the coin is just one example of where you can insert sine functions to create repeating behaviors. And hopefully this video has given you some ideas of how you can play with sine waves yourself. If you make something cool or have any questions, make sure to share it on the Brackies forum. That's pretty much all I have to show for this video. If you're interested in learning more about sine waves, there's a link for that in the description. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Math Theory. Let me know what you want to see next. If you want to support the series, you can do so on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much to all of the awesome people who donated in September, and a special thanks to Arun Meta, Robert Roche, James Calhoun, Kim Roos Kukos, Bao Andan Duang, and Vixen P. Thank you so much for donating, you guys are awesome. If you want to support Brackies yourself, you can go to patreon.com slash Brackies.